Hi, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating a welcome screen that contains user instructions on how to play the game. This screen is going to contain some um, fancy fonts. So uh, we're going to be looking at uh, some tools or coding that allows us to create uh, special effects with fonts. We're going to look at the difference between um, left aligned, right aligned and centered text and how that looks on the screen so you understand uh, how to use those. Uh, and we're also going to look at uh, how to display different uh, text on different screens. Okay, And we're going to be dealing with key presses to move from the welcome screen into the game. So I'm going to start by uh, showing you um, some tools for rooms. So currently in our game we have our three rooms that have been created, our three levels. And you'll notice by one of those rooms is a little home sync symbol. And that means that's the, uh, the the first room that's displayed in the game. So as soon as I run the game, that's the room that's, dis that's displayed. Now what I'm going to do is create a new room. Okay, So I'm just going to right click on the rooms assets and I'm going to create a room. And I'm going to call this rm underscore welcome. So this is going to be my welcome screen. And I'm going to change the size of my room to match the rest of my game. So that's going to be 1920 by 1080. You haven't got to use those room dimensions, mind this. That's just the, the room dimensions that I've chosen. And um, before we go any further, I'm going to make sure that I put the game object onto the room. So I'm going to highlight on the game object that we've created and drag it onto the room. Now when I run the room, all it'll display is the score on the lives because that's all. Oh, sorry. One thing I've forgotten to do first. Um, as I explained to you before, when I run this game, it'll display whatever symbol, whatever, um, whichever room has the home symbol, that is the room that's displayed first. So if I click it, okay, you'll see that it displays the game. So how do I go about changing that? Well, if I um, click on the home symbol, you can see these are my rooms, and I've got a room order. Now I can move these rooms up and down. So what I want really is to have the RM welcome at the top with the home symbol on it. And I can do that just by clicking the up button like that. And it moves my room, uh, my welcome room up to the top with the home symbol. And now when I run it, I can close that down now. And now when I run my, my game, what I should see displayed is a black uh, screen just with the lives and the score at the top. So, um, that's how we use um, the room manager to, to, dis to decide on which room is going to be displayed first. The, the order of the other rooms uh, is not particularly important because we're going to be um, using some code to decide where we go next using um, case statements. So let's have a look then at how we can use alignment to change the way that text is lined up on the screen. So I'm going to be using the um, game object and if you remember we use the draw text events and as I said before um, anything that's uh, that's got the forward slashes in front of it double forward slashes is treated as a comment and it's not drawn so currently when I run my my game I get the score and the lives appear and for the purpose and the benefit of what I'm going to do next I'm just going to put two comment symbols in front of those draw text statements and they will then be treated as comments. So now when I run my uh, my game, nothing is drawn to the screen. Okay, brilliant. So I want to look at three different alignment types and that is left aligned, right aligned text and um, centered text. So in order to change the alignment, we use a command called draw set h align. Okay, so draw underscore, oh, sorry, let's type that, draw underscore set underscore h align okay now it's important that um, you this you declare how you want your text to be aligned before you start um, your text uh, it defaults the left aligned but i just want to show you the difference between the three so um, that says align with the draw command you're going to set it and you're going to set the horizontal alignment open a bracket F A means font align underscore left. Okay, so what you're doing is setting the alignment of the font for the draw command to left. 
Okay, oh, semicolon on there. Now I'm going to cheat a bit here. I'm going to copy one of these draw statements rather than typing one in. And I'm going to paste that in there. So I'm going to draw my text at X. I'm going to say, I'll say 500. And I'm going to come down to about 500 as well on my screen. And I'm going to change the text I'm going to display to this font is left aligned. Okay. Okay, so let's run that just so we can see what's happening there. So at 500 by 500, I'm going to reduce that up. I'm going to take that up a little bit, actually. 500 is too much. But you can see that, uh, that that's a bit, that's 500 on the X. So this font is left aligned. Okay, so let's close that down. I'm going to take it on the Y axis. I'm going to take it back up to about uh, 300. Okay. I'm going to copy this statement just, to, just for speed. I'm going to paste underneath. So I'm going to come down to the next line and I'm going to paste underneath. And this time I'm going to use right alignment. Okay. And I'm going to say uh, at 100 down on the Y. So if I'm going to go for 400 this time, I'm going to say this font is right aligned. Okay. And I'm going to copy this statement to go actually. Let's look at that and see what that looks like. So you can see this is left alignment from 500. This is right alignment from 500. So it aligns it to the right. Okay. So it starts or at least it ends. Um, it's, it's the other way around. So left alignment reads from left to right. Right alignment, you have it going this way. And in center alignment, I'm sure you can guess. Let's just type it so you can see it. Right alignment. Let's copy that statement. Paste that in. And this time I'm going to use center. You have to be careful with center alignment because they use the American spelling. So it's C E N T O oh, C E N T E R, not R E, but we're going to write the correct spelling for us here. Center alignment. And again, I'm going to come down another 100 just so as it's um, easy to see. And let's run that. So you can see the difference between the three fonts. So this is the starting point. So this is left aligned. That is right aligned and that's center aligned. So it centers what you type around that point. Okay, so that's the difference between the three different uh, types of alignment. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna be using um, center alignment for our welcome screen to display a message on screen. So let's look at that then. I'm gonna get rid of all of this and I'm going to declare my alignment on my um, screen to be center. Now I'm going to start by creating um, some simple uh, fonts. I'm not going to show you the fancy stuff yet. So let's uh, use draw text again. So um, I'm going to copy this statement. So I've, I've aligned align my text to center. Okay. So now I'm going to set my um, my start point for my draw to the middle of my screen. And you're going to say, well, how do you do that? Well, that's uh, quite straightforward. What we do there is to work out half the size of the screen. Now, um, when we create rooms, um, the height and the width of the screen is stored in a variable called room height and room width. So um, what we're going to do is to um, find out half of that. So for the X value, I'm going to type in room width, underscore width, divided by two. And that will give me half of my room width. Um, as far as my um, Y coordinate, I'm going to come down to 100. And I'm just... In my uh, string, I'm going to put yo, exclamation mark, yo, exclamation mark, where's my hat, close my speech marks, okay, so that's my first line. 
I'm then going to do um, something um, that um, you haven't seen before, um, and I'm going to draw another text statement. Okay. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm going to copy that one. I'm going to copy this one. And I come into the next line, paste it in. And this time I'm going to do room width, but this time I'm going to come down to 200. And I'm going to say here, just so you can see what's going on, this is my next line. Okay, let's run that, see what that looks like. So I've got, yo, where's my hat? This is my next line, okay? Now, I could, for my next line of text, draw another draw text command and so on and so on and so on and keep going. And I would have loads and loads and loads of draw text statements. But Game Maker has got a super tool that we can use in order to allow us to um, create long passages of text. And what we do with that is um, I'm just going to drop this down to the next line, okay? And I'm going to put an at symbol in front of my, um, like that, in front of my um, text. And now, um, whatever I type in here, I'm going to get rid of this, okay? Whatever I type in here now, I can say this is my next line. This is my third line. Exclamation mark. And then I'm going to close my speech mark. Like, oh, not like that. Like that. Like that. Um, and when I run my, uh, my code now, it uh, tells me I've got an error. So if we look at the uh, compile errors at the bottom of the screen, okay, so I'm looking down here, um, it's telling us that um, game event draw at line 12 got a semicolon where it expected either a comma or a bracket. So there's game line 12. Now you'll notice that when I start my draw text statement, I've got a bracket there, okay, so there's an error on my, my typing here which is right, that's what, that's what should be there, but I should have finished here with a bracket, okay? So if I type a bracket in there, these errors disappear, okay? So this now should work. So when I recompile my code, so you can see this is my next line, this is my next line, this is my third line. So I can use that to create um, some, uh, some text on the screen in bulk. So what I want you to do is uh, to um, create your user instructions for your game. I'm going to do the same. I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to resume it once I've done that. Okay, so I've typed in the instructions for my game. So I'm just going to run them so you can see that they work. Um, I'm not saying they're the best. Uh, I could have added um, how many points I was going to score for collecting gems and how many points I was going to score for, for, um, for um, killing monsters. Uh, but you can see that it gives me the aim of the game, okay? It tells me how I gonna need to move, what keys I need to move and how to shoot. Um, I need to collect the key from each level to progress to the next level in the game. And it's asking me to press enter to start the game. Okay, so it's uh, giving me instructions on how to proceed. Okay, so you're gonna say, well, you said you were gonna show me fancy fonts. Well, I am, okay? And what we're gonna do, we're gonna change this first statement up here, okay, where I've got my title. And I'm going to use a special event, a special type of event. I'm going to come down. I'm going to get rid of this line of text in a minute, but I'm going to use it for reference as I start typing this new one. Okay. So let's have a look. So I want to draw text. Draw underscore text underscore transformed. And I'm going to use this bottom one here. Draw text transformed color. Okay, now there's lots of, um, of uh, parameters here, so we're gonna go through these in, in, in turn. So the X and the Y position, that's the same as a normal draw text statement, so that's where do you want to draw your text. So I wanna say room width, room underscore width, divided by two. 
Okay, I'm going to use the same setting as my uh, my other comma, my other um, text statement underneath here for my um, my y-axis. So that's 100, comma, and I'm, it's asking me what the string is going to be. So the string is as it is in my other one. Yo, exclamation mark, double space. Where's my hat? Where? Where's my hat? Drop there. Where's my hat? Okay, and I'm going to close the, the string then, like that. Comma. Now I'm looking at the bottom. So if you're not with me, I'm looking at the bottom here. Okay, this is where it's going to be giving me all of my uh, my, my parameters. So now it's asking me how much do I want to scale the font? So this font has a size. So I could, if I make it, uh, if I put that as one, my font size will stay the same as all my other text. If I set it at two, it'll double the size. If I set it at three, it'll triple the size. So let's try three, okay? So I'm gonna try, I'm gonna scale it three times as big on the X, comma. I'm gonna do the same thing on the Y to keep it uh, consistent. And do I want to angle it? In other words, do I want the text to slant? Okay, no I don't, so I'm gonna put a zero in there. Okay, now it's asking me for C1, C2, C3, and C4. Now these are colors. So um, I'm gonna show you what happens when you change these in a minute, but I'm going to um, start with um, blue. So C underscore, okay, and there's the different colors that I can use. So you start with C underscore and you can give it, um, and you can choose your color. So I'm gonna go blue. Okay, comma, color two, C underscore blue, comma, C3, that's color three, C underscore blue, comma, C4, C underscore blue. And then the last bit is the alpha, that's the transparency. You don't want um, the transparency, okay? You want it to be solid. So you set the transparency to um, to one. So if I made it 0 0.5, it would fade, fade it out, for example, okay? So let's have a look and see how that looks. Okay, so that's my color so far. So you can see that I might decide I want to move that up slightly. I'm gonna get rid of this, um, this line of text here. So let's get rid of, um, let's change that to 50 for the y-axis, and let's get rid of the original line of text, okay? And let's make sure that we put our semicolon at the end, just to make sure that we're using the right um, structure. So let's run it again. So that's better. So you can see, yo, where's my hat? It's in blue, okay? I've got a small s, so I can change that. Where's my hat? All right, so what are all these things here do then? Well, let's change the let's change this one here rather than blue. Let's change that to yellow, and let's change that one to yellow. Okay, and let's run it again. So you can see I'm going from blue to yellow. Okay, so you can have a play about with those different colors and find which one works for you. But that's a way in which you can use um, the set um, text transform color uh, to um, add effects to your text. So yes, whilst it is quite a complex um, statement, once you start working through it, it does become quite uh, straightforward. So uh, like I say, that command is the draw text transform color command. You're giving the same X and Y values, um, it works the same way as that. So it's, it's exactly the same as a draw statement up to this point, okay? And then this is the parameters, these are the parameters. So if I change the scaling, for example, if I change that to three and I change that to one, let's see what that imp impact that has. Okay, so you can see that it, it, uh, it makes the, um, the font wider, but it's keeping it the same height. Okay, as the other as the other font down here. All right, so let's put that back to three. Okay, so you have a play about with those. If I want, if it, let's try this transparency at the end, 0 0.5. Said about that. So if I play it now, 
you can see that it's faded the the font date okay so um, so that's how we use that uh, that statement to set the transparent color I'll change that back to one and uh, what we're going to look at now is how do we move the game forward um, through clicking the enter to start the game so that's um, another um, it's going to be using another event that you haven't used before called a step event now if we look at the settings of our game so I'm looking at the game options at the top here okay you haven't got to do this I'm just uh, demonstrating you can see that in our options our game is set to, to the game frames per second so that's 60 frames per second and what that means is that uh, the game calculates um, 60 uh, times a second so it runs at 60 frames 60 game frames a second and with this, we have a special event that we've got here called a step event and a step event the difference between a step event and a normal event is a normal event um, runs once it's checked for once whereas a step event is constantly checked every single frame of the game so we need to use step events for running our, our, our game because we constantly want to check to see if the enter button is pressed when we're on a certain screen okay so um, we're going to add event and we're going to create a step event okay so I'm going to um, change this to game run so I'm going to change this or when game is running So what I want to do is to check to see whether the um, the enter key is is pressed. So um, we need to do a keyboard check pressed um, statement, okay? Which is a statement you haven't used before. So um, it's an if statement. So an if statement um, checks a condition, and if it's met, it does something. If it's not met, it doesn't do it. Okay. So we're going to type in if. We're going to open a bracket. Keyboard. underscore check underscore pressed okay so you can see as I'm starting to type that it's, it's saying at the end it wants to uh, you need to identify a key okay so pressed open a bracket and now it's going to ask me what key do I want to check for um, to, to check this being pressed okay and what I want to do is uh, VK underscore so that's the, the key we're going to check for and we need to uh, scroll down till we find enter so there it is vk enter so that's what we're going to check for we're going to check to see if the um keyboard uh, uh, as uh, on the keyboard whether or not the enter key is being pressed we don't put a semicolon at the end of that line now we only run what's inside the curly brackets on an if statement so we do it curly brackets and we want to uh, room underscore go to okay and we want to go to level one okay so that is rm underscore there's level one there level one we're going to close that bracket and we're going to put our semicolon in and we're just going to close down the curly brackets so that's what it's going to do so this line this section of code now in oh, 60 times every single game frame it's going to check um oh sorry 60 times uh each, on each frame of the game it's going to check uh if the keyboard has been pressed and if it has if it's an enter key then if it has been if the enter key has been pressed it's going to uh, move us to level one in our game if and it hasn't been pressed then it's not going to move us to level one okay so um, I'm gonna give that a little try so let's run the game okay so I'm at my menu screen so I'm pressing the spacebar at the moment nothing's happening lots of different keys nothing's happening I'm gonna press the enter key right it starts my game oh so what's going on there why is that happening well we need to look at the code to realize what's going on there so what's happening it's moved me to my game but i've still got my menu screen or at least my welcome screen on the screen as well so let's have a look at what's going on well in my um, draw event 
okay this is going to be drawn on any room that's displayed so i need a way of ensuring that only the text i need to be displayed on a room is displayed on a room okay and i'm going to do that um, using a uh, case statement so it's going to check to see what room we're in and depending on what room we're in it's going to uh, draw um, text on the screen um, for that room so we're going to use a case statement to do that and you've used a case statement before when we took when we dealt with the exit so when you uh, walked over the exit depending on what room you're in it would take you to a different room so we're going to do something similar here so we're going to um, um, switch the room on certain cases okay so we're going to uh, switch open a bracket room okay So I'm going to give myself a couple of lines here, just to do, just so I can I can do a bit of work here. And the switch room statement starts with a with a curly bracket, and I'm just going to close the curly bracket here. So anything I type in the switch statement is going to be inside these curly brackets. Okay. So the first thing I want to do is a case statement. So switch room. So I'm going to just come in uh, using the tab key, so as I can block my code, so it's easy to read. So if so case. I'm in um, RM underscore welcome. So if I'm in the welcome room, I want to do the following. So I'm going to put the colon. Then I want to do this text that I've got here. Okay. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it in here. Okay. To get rid of this text now because I don't need it here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure, and it's really, really important you do this, when you've used a center command, okay, that you convert or you move the, or you change the alignment back to left, because if you don't, when you do your next piece of text, okay, it will remember the center alignment. So we're going to do a draw, set, align, H align, sorry h align comment and we're going to set it to fa underscore left okay and then we're going to do a break to uh to stop this section of case okay we can do break Because a case statement won't stop running that particular section until it gets to a break command. So it's important at the end of every case statement, you use the break statement. Okay. Right. So what happens then if we're in um, level one? So case. RM underscore level one. So we've got three of these to do, three more of these. And we're going to put a colon. And now I'm going to copy this because all I want to draw on the screen um, with this case statement are these two lines. I'm going to get rid of the um, comments, comment bits there first. I'm going to highlight those two pieces of text. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to come down to the next line and I'm going to paste it in. Okay, let's just uh, move that across. And then I'm going to put a break command bottom of that one. Now I'm going to copy this whole piece of text here because I need to do this three times. I'm going to come down two lines and I'm going to paste that in and this time case level two. Okay and I'm going to come down another two lines and I'm going to paste that in case level three. So now what should happen when I press the enter key this text should disappear and I should be left with um, the score on the screen, but I shouldn't see the score on the screen for the welcome page. Let's just get rid of that piece of text up there, although I will. Okay, right. Okay, let's try it. So I'm going to run my, my game. Let's see what happens. So I've got my text on the screen. I'm going to press enter to start my game. And then my text disappears and I'm, I'm just left with my, my scoring system. We've still got this problem though, haven't we? Where um, if I go on to level two, um, I 
it resets the game. So we need to deal with that before we go any further. As a matter of fact, we'll deal with that actually in the next video. So um, I've still got that situation where it resets my lives and things. So I'm going to deal with that in the next video about um, but making the scores persistent. Um, and um, we're going to look at um, the game win screen um, and the uh, game lose screen. Okay, so those, that's going to be the next video. So that's going to be uh, persistence, keeping the, um, the the score on the lives through all rooms and the win and the lose screen. So um, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.